right. Oh, good morning, everybody. Uh, happy Wednesday. Hope you're feeling all right. Uh, if you have a blanket somewhere nearby and you choose to use it, um, we will at the very end of practice. So if you want just a minute to go uh, find one, you have a few moments. And uh, if not, like I said, it, it's just optional, but um, we'll do a little restorative posture at the very end of our practice today that uh, feels good to use a blanket for. Otherwise, you won't really need uh, too much else. Welcome, welcome. We're going to do a little Wednesday morning um, kind of stretchy flow. Uh, not a full-blown restorative class, uh, however trying to keep a little bit of that essence of something um, right in the middle of the week that just feels really good. We used to do a, a stretchy nap class always on Wednesday morning, uh, back in the before times, right? <laughs> so we'll keep that vibe around a little bit, but uh, we may not always do a full-blown restorative class, but I would like to always offer something on, on this Wednesday slot that is um, just meant to reset you for the rest of your week. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, in particular, working on the hips and the low back. And I know that uh, that'll probably get a bunch of yays and maybe a few nays, but most of us can take some kind of uh, care with our, our, our lower backs and our hips. I think it's number one place that um, generally most bodies feel some resistance from time to time. And also on the other end of the spectrum, it's one of the places that even though it may not always be fun to do the work of getting in there, it's so great when, when you're done <laughs> to feel um, that release, especially in those parts of your body. So that's what we'll focus mostly on. And we will move around. So like I said, not completely stationary practice today, but we'll also have some slower, softer moments in the postures to really just feel things out, listen to the breath, all that good stuff. So use your best judgment, and as always, make those modifications and variations when you need them. And we are going to start out in a child's pose today. If you do have a little blanket nearby already and you want to use it here, you sure could. I'm going to fold mine over so that it's kind of quad folded and then just slide it right back here so that I've got a little something to try to get my hips on. Having a, a base under your body in this pose just encourages the creases of the hips, the hip girdle, the flexors, the low back, all of that stuff to release a little bit because it doesn't feel like you're suspending yourself in this pose. So that's up to you. And then you can do whatever you like with your upper body, stack your forearms, your hands, or stretch the arms, either forward or back alongside the body is just fine. Once you've got the basic shape of the pose, you're going to take a couple exaggerated exhales. Almost like tricking yourself into breathing a little deeper. Just remind your body how it feels to take a full deep breath in. And a long, satisfying exhale out. Even if you have to exaggerate the feel, the sound, the touch, it's a good place to start. Just maybe even a little sigh. And then you can settle back in to just a steady, easy inhalation, exhalation. Back rises and falls, belly expands and contracts.
Try about three or four more full cycles of breath in and out. Every exhale is just another opportunity for you to try to let something go from the physical body, let something go from the mind. Remember that your only job is to be right here, right now, and breathe. Everything else can wait. There's nothing else to do. You're not missing out on anything. There's nowhere else you need to be. You found this time in your day to get on your mat, so let yourself really be on your mat. And on your next inhale, lift up your chest, take a few steps with your hands to the right, just adding a little bit of length down the left side of the body. You can let your head drop a little or a lot there. Just go as far as it feels good. And then swing it back through center and walk the hands all the way over to the left right side body gets long breathe make a little space between your ribs bring it back to the middle once more final exhale right here and really let your chest Heart center, forehead drop as close to the ground as possible. And then next inhalation, go ahead, lift up. We're gonna come out of that child's pose just a little bit. You can step your knees in a tad. And if you feel like you need to stretch maybe one leg back and then the other, if you tend to get a little tight in the knee joint or the hip, go right ahead. Stay in your tabletop and walk your hands forward a few more steps. And we're going to drop right back in there, but this time you're going to keep your booty up nice and high and just try to get your heart center and maybe your chin down on the ground. So this is that little downward facing puppy pose, kind of halfway between child's pose and down dog. This one's for your heart center to stretch open across your chest and then around you feel that come up underneath your shoulder blades and lengthen all the way through the shoulder girdle. And inhale, bring it back up. And step your hands in. Now just stacking up into a pretty normal tabletop feel in your body, whatever that means, you know, kind of a, a weird word to use, right? Because what's normal for me is probably not normal for everybody. So same goes for you, only you know what it feels like, but you wanna get your shoulders over your elbows, pardon me, <coughs> elbows over the wrists <clears throat> so that the joints are all stacked nice. And then think about your frontal hip bones here, right over your kneecaps. Good. So starting from that tabletop position, let your belly drop. We'll move into a cow stretch, tilt the tail, lift the chin, tailbone goes up. Exhale in around all the way through cat. But listen, this isn't your same old boring cat and cow. We're gonna round into cat shape and then we're gonna walk the hands in toward the body and roll up through the spine until you're standing on your knees. Good. Hands are gonna come around to find your hips once you're upright. We're going really slow and just talking through this first round so that we know exactly what it is that we're looking for and then we'll start to flow a little bit. Gentle kneeling back bend here. Doesn't have to be full blown camel pose, Ustrasana, just enough. I'm gonna lengthen out the front of the body. And then on your exhale, Release, take a seat back on your heels, Virasana, Hero's Pose. Right hand drops out to the side, left arm will come up, side body stretch again right here. All right. Give your left rib cage a little push out to the left side, really lengthen there. 
And back up. Use your obliques and intercostals. Low belly muscles turn on. Mudiana Bandha, Mula Bandha. Right arm comes up and over. Stretch down the right side. Back through the middle, inhale up again, strong core. Hands come around behind your back and lock your fingers together here. Baddha Hasta, pull your knuckles down towards your tailbone as you pull the shoulder blades together. Lift your chin off your chest, take a look up. Good. And then on the exhale, belly on your thighs. You can go forehead to the ground or crown of the head. If you know that that's okay for your neck, you tuck your chin, either one. If you go forehead down, you can just hold in a child's pose and lift your knuckles away from your spine. Crown of the head down, you're gonna lift your booty back up in the air. And same thing, stretch the knuckles off the back. Two. And one. Release your hips to your heels in either posture. If you're already there, then just let the arms go. Slide your hands out in front of you. Full stretch through your child's pose. Bring your gaze forward as well. And next inhale, elbows on the ground. Slither, slide yourself out onto your belly. Go ahead, make a little adjustment there if you need to. Right into Sphinx pose. So elbows stay down. Again, elbow under the shoulder. Go ahead, and you're just gonna pull your heart forward. So it's a pretty subtle low back stretch there. If you want more, you can lift your elbows up off the ground and make king cobra stretch. You can try kind of tenting the fingertips to see what that feels like. And just keep breathing. If you want to do a little shoulder twisting, just drop one side, look around behind you, over to the other. Whatever feels good. Roll out the neck. We'll stay for three. Two, and one, lower down, hands slide in. Good, we're gonna push it up. Inhale to tabletop, stay right there. On your exhale, just reset the body. Find that solid, sturdy shape. Here we go again. Inhale, belly drops. Cow stretch comes first, gaze goes up. Even though your belly drops, keep your navel pulling tight to your spine. Exhale round, all the way through cat. Hold that cat shape, walk your hands towards your knees and then up your thighs, all the way to your hips or maybe around to your low back. Next inhale, good. It feels good to go back a little deeper, go back a little deeper with that kneeling back bend. And then release, set the hips down. Right, let's go left arm out first to the side, right arm up and over. Walk those left fingertips as far out there as it feels good. And now we're just flowing one breath, one movement. Inhale right back up. Ooh. Exhale the other way around. Back up. Take a deep breath in. Hands come around behind. Lock it up. Inhale. Heart center lifts. Navel pulls in. Put your belly on your thighs, forehead or crown of the head on the mat, and then you can lift the hips if you'd like. One stretch there. Sha Shasana, rabbit pose. If you're coming all the way to the crown of the head, you want to try to keep not a ton of pressure there. It's really just kind of enough to balance while your hips go up and then right back down. Relax into your child's pose. Slide your hands out in front. From there, take a peek forward. Slither and slide onto your belly. Bhujangasana, Sphinx pose, Cobra pose, whatever feels good to stretch your back here. So this part's kind of creatively up to you and we'll give it three breaths. Walking the hands around. Maybe it feels good to lift and lower a few times. Whatever the case may be. Let's go a couple more times, up to the hands and knees. Reset the body, inhale, drop the belly. 
Now focus on the breath more than anything else. Exhale around, cat stretch. Hands walk in at the bottom of that exhale. You bring it up. Deep breath in. Go into your back bend on your breath out. Inhale back upright. Take a seat. Right arm out to the side. Left arm comes up and then if you want, you can just stay with this or if you want to try to maybe sneak that left leg out and really push your hips forward. Go all the way down the left side body. That's just one nice option. And then you release, swing it back to both knees around the other way. Right arm comes up. Right leg might even sneak out there for a breath. Back in. And sit into hero and lock up your hands. Heart center goes up. Gaze lifts. Fold on the breath out. And if you're lifting your hips, just roll it right to the crown of the head and right back down. Child's pose, release the arms. We'll go one last time through, hands forward, slide to your belly. Few moments here to do some back stretches. And if you're really feeling like, you know, I kind of want to pull through and get an up dog, and the up dog feels so good that I want to tuck my toes and go for a down dog, you could sneak a little vinyasa in right there. Why not? Either way, you'll push up from your belly or you'll drop down from down dog to the hands and knees and we start one last warm up round here. Meet me in cow, lift the chin, tailbone lifts, exhale, all the way to cat. Roll up or walk your hands up the legs. Find a place to hold on to your hips or your low back. Pause right there. Three big breaths out your mouth if you'd like. One. Two. Three. Drop it down to hero, virasana. Take a moment if you feel a little dizzy, a little wonky there. Just let it pass you by. Left hand out, right arm up, right side body stretch, or maybe the right leg kicks out again. And let's bring it down, around and through to the other way. Left arm up, maybe the left leg out. If that left leg comes out, push, 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 push your hips toward me. There. And then release. Very last time to bring the hands around behind the back. Heart center open. Hold right there. Now, if you've done this the same way every time, at least this last round, try putting your other thumb on top. You might even slide every finger over one knuckle so that you have that second side grip going. Just notice a little difference there. Take a bow forward or lift your hips up. Release back down. Slide the arms out front. And final time to slide out onto your belly. Okay, anything that feels good. Spinal stretching, couple cobras. I kind of like walking the hands around in this pose and giving the shoulders a good twist. All the while I'm keeping my frontal hip bones, and pelvic bone connected to the mat so that isolating the lumbar spine and the lower abdominals. Again, you can take it through to child's pose, tabletop, or maybe you want to push this one up through a high plank. A little bit more energy moving through the body, and we'll all meet in downward facing dog eventually. 
Maybe it's your first down dog so far, and if that's the case, then you're gonna work it out a little bit. Warming up the hamstrings. Awaken the knees, the ankles. Let the lower body come into life. Right. And then gaze forward. Let's walk it up to the top of the mat. Hang upside down when you get there. And shake loose any tension in the shoulders. And if there's some arm variation, ragdoll, chest expansion. If you want to take your fingers around your big toes. That's all up to you. you. Just pick your favorite forward fold here. All right. And then we're gonna work from a squat, so not even coming all the way up to a standing position at any point today. We're gonna keep everything really close to the ground in our flow. And we're gonna begin with Malasana. So toes are gonna work their way out to the edges of your mat. Heels come in and then hips drop down. Now the first time I get into this pose, just this is just me talking about my body, so you might feel the same, might feel different. I'm just giving you a reference point. I do yoga every day and I still have really tight hips. Sometimes that's just the way it goes. So I have to kind of wiggle into this one a few times. And often I can't get my heels down comfortably, at least for the first few attempts. Maybe they'll eventually get there. And if, if that's how you feel, that's okay. Let your heels hover. Bring your palms together, try to get your thumbs right in front of your heart center, and then think more about just lengthening through your spine. Okay. Tuck your low belly muscles in. I swear it's one of those funny things about life where I teach yoga in my front porch at one time a week, right? And that one, one hour on Wednesday morning, every giant truck will come down the street, every neighbor will mow their lawn, <laughs> Every like loud possible, I'm sure the fire truck will go by a few times. Just the way it goes, right? Never gonna get yoga in that perfect bubble, so we might as well learn how to do it wherever, whenever. Take another big breath out right there. And then hands go down, hips go up, and we're gonna move just the left foot. Right foot can stay exactly where it's at. Even with the toes turned out a little bit, that's good. Left leg's gonna come all the way back for a big step, and then we'll just sink down right into our first deep hip stretch, low lunge. Again, we're going real slow this first time through, and then we'll flow this once or twice. So runner's lunge position, you're welcome to stay on your hands. Maybe you wanna try one forearm. Maybe you wanna try two. That's always gonna be up to you. I'm going to keep rocking my hips a little here because it just feels good. And I mean, if you got a yoga practice in your life that never makes you feel good, you know, reconsider. <laughs> it's, it should feel good. It should feel good to get on your mat. Uh, sometimes it's not always 100% pleasant to work through tight spots in your body and to work through stuff in your mind, right? It's it's hard for all of us. It's not what we want to necessarily always do, but the benefit of doing so kind of outweighs everything else. So make sure that you find those moments in your practice that are joyful, that make you feel good about what you're doing and make you want to get back on your mat and do it again, right? It doesn't matter what the postures look like or you know, whether or not you think you're doing the most advanced, insane yoga practice because oftentimes those are the ones that don't necessarily feel all that good. It's kind of putting your body through the ringer. And they're harder on your mind too. You hold yourself to those standards that there's no need to hang on to any expectation or any judgment of what happens on your mat. That's your business. So 
Just enjoy what feels good. Let's take another big breath here. <laughs> and then slowly work your way back up. You can keep your back knee down or you're welcome to lift it, whichever one feels good. And you can bring your right arm up. Just go for that gentle open twist. Three, two, and one. Right hand comes back down and let's walk and pivot. We're just gonna turn the toes, walk the hands around until you're facing that long edge of your mat. Every time I teach this sequence, people love it. So it's been a little while, we'll, we'll do it today. You need to hang upside down in prasarita and then you just start that alternating bend of the knees. Rocking back and forth again here. You might start small. And then as things loosen up, maybe go down a little deeper and really drop into one side and then the other. You can turn your toes up like that there. And you'll start getting into your hamstrings. A little lateral squat from side to side. Three. Two. Once you've evened things out, hips go back up nice and high. And then one more exhale. You reach out, find the ankles, the calves, just a little something to hang on to. Let your head be the heaviest part of the pose. Work some traction in the spine here. Trying to make as much space between the crown of your head and your tailbone as possible. Three. Two. And one. All right, hands come back to the ground here. And then we're gonna walk it back around, just pivot around to the front one more time. That's it for now. We're gonna do just that first part, then we'll learn the second half. Right toes turn out, left foot steps up, you go back into your deep lunge at the top of the mat. Malasana, work in there, however it feels good to you. Yeah, if you need to put your elbows up here on your knees, no problem. You can just slowly think about easing both heels and your tailbone down. Hands can stay at your heart. And then we're breathing. Close your eyes if you can. Another nice little trick here is just to hold your mat like this. If you feel like you can work on the length in your spine a little better without constantly feeling like you're gonna fall over backward. If I close my eyes in this pose, I'm forced to pay attention a lot more to what's going on on the inside. So make sure my bandhas are engaged, a little squeeze of all those muscles below and behind the navel. I can focus on the breath, think about lifting the crown of the head up over the heart, heart over the tailbone. Two and one. Hands go down, hips go up. You get a little release. And then leave that left foot where it is. Big sweeping step back with your right foot and then go on down. I like bringing my back knee to the ground. Maybe feels better in your body to hover the thigh or the knee. These are the types of things that you'll just figure out as you go along. All right. Next five or six breaths are all yours. Just do what feels good. Explore those little movements that your body's asking for here. and one all right 
slowly up onto your hands. Now you can come off that back knee. Just to make sure there's not any pressure in that knee when you twist, right? Generally, not that big of a deal if you know your body well enough, but for most people, it's gonna feel better to lift up off the knee. Left arm swings all the way open. So we get this little twist to lengthen things out and to also give us the momentum that we need to exhale, release, and walk along the edge of the mat, pivot around, everything faces the right edge. All 10 toes come along with you for the ride and then upside down we go. Shake it out. All the same options you had on the first side. Hips moving side to side, alternating side lunge. If you want to take your feet out a little wider, see how your center splits are feeling these days. That's one option. Maybe trying that chest expansion would feel good. If I got any headstanders out there, you've got time to work that headstand a little bit today if you want to. Not necessary by any means, just an option. So work through these variations for another three breaths or so. My other favorites is to walk your hands out kind of like when we did that downward facing puppy earlier when we brought the hands way out in front but then we tried to drop the chest and the forehead back down and then stretch the shoulders all right take it back in we go all the way back around to the front and then this time we're just going to pause right there once you're facing the front Take a step to the top, but keep your feet kind of side by side now. There you go. Lengthen halfway. Ardha Uttanasana, exhale, release. Drop your hips down toward a crouch and curl position. And then when you get low enough to the ground, just rock back. Let your booty hit the mat and lift your legs up. Meet me in boat. Quick little boat pose here. Sneak it in that core work wherever we can. There's five, four, Three, two, and one. Cross your ankles, plant your hands. Vinyasa if you want one here, or you can just step right on back to downward facing dog. Hips go up nice and high. And then relax down to the knees. Press back into child's. Take a soft <sighs> exhale. A little breather here for a few moments. Have some water if you need some. Just a quick little break time. And we're gonna flow through that first part and then add on the second half one time through and then we'll get into our last little restorative portion of a couple of nice longer holds and that'll be that. All right. So when you're ready, let's start with our flow from earlier. You can meet me on hands and knees anytime you'd like. From tabletop, drop your belly, inhale, lift your chin. Breathe in. Good. Exhale round all the way out. Cat stretch. From your cat, push the ground away. Come up to stand on your knees. Grab your hips or your low back and take a quick camel. Exhale, release. Drop down. Right arm out to the side. Left arm up, maybe left leg out. Those hip flexors stretched out through center. Good. Don't be afraid to get really expressive and big with this. I'm just working with really limited space around me, so I kind of have to 
keep my Padre Grasa pose a little smaller today. Hands behind, lock it up, lift the heart, take a quick dive down, belly on the thighs, forehead, or cry with the head on the ground. You might lift for a moment. And then release the hips to the heels, child's pose. Hands slide out in front from your child's. Take a look out. Now we're just gonna shift out and lower through a chodaranga. You can go all the way down if you want, halfway up for cobra or all the way for up dog and back to downward facing dog. Deep breath out. Good, gaze forward. Now you can step, walk, or try a little hop into your frog, right? There you go, right at the top. Malasana, palms hit the heart center for a moment. We're gonna add one little thing in here, just a right arm reaching up for a moment. Quick little twist. Good. Hands down, left foot back. Sink in. This time, you might just let the back knee tap down for a moment. You can take a quick little bow down. And you push right back up. And on the inhale, lift your back knee, lift your right arm, twist, dragonfly pose. Exhale, unwind. Walk it around to the left. Hands and feet come along with you. Relengthen again. Fold deeper, perhaps you grab the heels, the calves, the backs of the legs. Nice job, all of your breath out. All right, here's where we're gonna add on. Hands on the ground, both sets of toes out, both heels in, and then wide squat. Now I said we weren't gonna come up to stand and we're really not in a standing position here. We're in a low, low, deep squat, goddess pose. Heart center comes up, good. Rock that around a little bit. And then just twist the shoulders, drop one side down, look up and back. My favorite low back, mid back stretch of all time right there. <sighs> Inhale through center. Exhale, twist again. And we'll do it two more times. Inhale through the middle. Exhale, twist. Center. And twist. Good opportunity to reconnect to your breathing one more time. Inhale through the middle. Exhale, twist. Center. Other way around. All right. Bring it back to center. Arms come out. Now watch this. Right knee's not gonna really do much. I'm just gonna turn and pivot my back foot so that I fall into a warrior two. Back toes came around a little bit. Staying low, low, low in that warrior two. So you're still not all the way standing up. We're deep in a warrior two, hold. Take a quick little reverse position, reach up, get some momentum. Hands come to the mat on your exhale. Right foot swings high behind you. Send it up, take one breath in. And then all the way through, you know we're not gonna do a hips class without half pigeon, right? Here it is. Right knee comes up toward the base of your right thumb, shin across the mat. Good. Work yourself down into that familiar half pigeon shape. You know you can flip this on your back if you need to. You just make figure four legs and you turn around lie down and cross one ankle over to the opposite thigh. That's how you modify. If you feel okay right here, sink in, settle in. We won't be here for an eternity, but certainly for several breaths. All variations are welcome as always. If you feel like you wanna get in there deeper, if you do have that blanket nearby and you wanna wedge something under your chest, or maybe something under your right hip or the front of your left hip. These are good options. You guys stay right there. I'll be right back. So getting your body as comfortable as can be here, then 
redirect the focus to your breath. Scan through the body and just notice the places where you're still hanging on. Can you let go between your shoulder blades? Can you let a little tension out of your cheekbones and your jaw? Those little corners around the eyes and the mouth. And five more cycles of breath here. Try to make them as smooth and steady as possible. Even if you have to exaggerate the sound and the feel of the breath, right? To bring it back to the forefront, it is always the foundation of the practice. Often times, you know, years ago, especially in India and, you know, other parts of the Eastern world, if you had a yoga teacher that was helping you, um, they would not even give you any postures to do for a while. They would just sit and listen to you breathe. They'd give you some real simple breathing techniques to do, maybe, uh, you know, a meditation to work on, and then once you proved that you could really focus on your breath, then they'd start teaching you a couple poses, right? <laughs> we always do things the opposite in the West, and we, we always want the as quickest way to the end result as possible. So for, for Western learners, um, it takes us a little bit longer to remember that you have to start with the foundation. You can get to the end result if you want to, but you're missing all the good stuff. You're kind of skipping all the, uh, it's like building a really pretty, pretty house on a really shitty foundation, right? You know, it doesn't matter. Eventually it's going to crumble and fall down. So that's why learning how to breathe is so important because if you have that, you have a yoga practice. That's, that's what you have to hang on to. The ability to slow down and really focus on your breath if you don't lose that, then you won't lose anything else. You know, your postures might change over time. That's just part of, you know, we all get a little older, our bodies don't do the same things. Who cares about that, right? But if you can still sit down and focus on your breath and meditate a little bit, you have a yoga practice for your whole life. Come on out of there, shake that right leg out a little bit. All right, from this downward facing dog. Again, you've got an option. You can step, you can walk, or you can try a little hop. Oh, down into your squat. Whew, finally got one that's starting to feel pretty good. Hands at your heart center. Now we're just moving with the breath here for a moment. We'll take the left arm up for a second. So you're gonna add a little twist in your malasana. Big inhale. As your left hand comes down, your right foot steps back. There's that low runner's lunge. Get the opportunity here to just bow as close to the ground as you can for a moment. And push back up. 
Inhale, left arm sweeps open, dragonfly twist. And on your exhale, release, walk it around the right edge of your mat. All 10 toes come along for the ride as you inhale. Pull up, low belly, nice and tight. Exhale, take your deepest forward fold. Hands on the ground, gaze out, little half lift again. That's just so that you can turn your toes out, draw your heels in, drop your butt down, and then bring those hands up onto your thighs. Here you are again. Deep yogi squat or goddess pose, heart centers up. Oh, babe's here. So I'll tell you something about babe in a moment. She's trying to make amends with me right now because she was pretty naughty this morning and she got in trouble. Yeah, you did get in trouble. You were naughty. So she's been having uh, silent treatment, quiet time in the other room, but now apparently she's ready to finally, I told her to come to me when she was ready to make friends. So are you, are you feeling like you're ready to apologize? Good, keep twisting your shoulders back and forth, side to side. I mean, she is still a puppy after all, but challenging me lately. All right, back to the middle. Now we're just gonna turn and pivot the back foot so that you come into warrior two and keeping everything low. Try not to release and straighten out your legs. You wanna feel a little bit of that burn. You have that strong warrior two position right here. Good, breathe, 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 breathe. Tilt up and back, take a full stretch. Reverse, hands hit the mat. We'll spin it down. Good, and then left leg goes up high behind you. Big breath in, good, and you're gonna swing into that half pigeon. Okay, you scoot over a little bit. Just scoot over a little bit. There. <laughs> left leg pigeon when you're ready. You can stay here, you just have to scoot over. Okay, come down. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There. All right. So get in, get a little something underneath of you here. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll do our left side. Are you feeling regretful? I'm sorry too. Sorry I got mad. But you were something else today. Mm -hmm. You needed a little quiet time, didn't you? You just breathe and be by yourself. Thank you for coming to say you're sorry. Babe says she's sorry, everybody. <laughs> All right, let's relax here for about another minute or two. We will get back to this. Yeah. We will get back to this. Mm -hmm. She's really probably just realizing that if she didn't come in and say she was sorry and make amends that there was going to be no, no walk to the uh, lake for fetching, fetch swimming, which is her, her favorite thing in the whole wide world. So yeah, sometimes you have to say you're sorry. All right, go on. We'll keep breathing right here, babe. Go on. Another few breaths.
five more exhales. You can't lay right there. You gotta lay in here. When things start to feel pretty good there, you can slowly bring yourself up and take that last down dog to shake it all loose. And then go ahead, step walk or hop on through to a seat. Get your legs out in front. We're gonna use this little blanket for two things here at the end, actually. And if you don't have a blanket, you can do both of these stretches without. It's really not a big deal. If you have one, I've kind of got mine, you know, folded once, and then I'm going to roll so that I have just a little roll like this, and it's gonna go right underneath the back side of the knees. All I'm doing is just making this forward fold a little bit more comfortable and come out, touch your toes and round. Again, you can do that without a blanket, but we're gonna hold right there. Paschimottanasana, just about 10 big breaths. No tension in the neck, the shoulders, just let all of that go. you set up in this final pose and then I'm just gonna leave you there and that's where you'll finish today and you'll stay as long as you'd like relax and we'll do the sort of modified version of fish pose or Baddha Konasana whichever one you like so I already have this little roll going right here and basically it's just kind of like a little makeshift bolster so what I could do I'm just gonna turn to the side is I can just put that right at the base of my spine and you can run it right along your back and then your knees can fall open into this little butterfly shape. Then you basically just let that baby run right along your spinal column and drop back and relax. The other way to get really comfortable with a blanket, I can show you here how to do this one, <clears throat> is to unfold that blanket so that this longest part can See, I can get all the way out to a nice long. And then essentially, you're just gonna roll. I'm gonna turn this this way now so that I can roll it. But you're just gonna make like a little rope. Just a nice long, see that? Okay. And then you go bottoms of the feet together. Here's my feet. And I'm just gonna drop that blanket over the top. It's right over my feet. And then lift the knees a little bit and pull underneath. So again, all I did was make a long rope of my blanket, bottoms of the feet together, you drop right over the top, just set it down, lift the knees, pull underneath so that you can cinch your legs up as close to you as you'd like. And then these little blanket ends can tuck in here around your hips if you want to. 
then you just ease yourself down onto your back. Once you get on the ground, you'll be able to pull up even closer and get those heels like right up close to your glutes and then tuck your little blanket ends in over the creases of your hips and your legs are just gonna hang in that cradle. And then if you're lucky enough to have another pillow or something to put under your back, you could get both that fish shape going on the upper body and the cradling of the legs, but well, one or the other is probably okay. I don't like this. That's yours. And then just to get your body as comfortable as possible, find a place where you can completely and totally relax. Nothing left to do, still nowhere else to be. And just like we did in the beginning, try a couple of exaggerated exhales to get you into this pose. So just a full breath through the nose. And an exhale out. Once or twice more, inhale. Exhale out. And then there you are. Resting in your Shavasana today for as long as you would like. I'm going to encourage you to stay there for at least a few minutes. Maybe longer if possible. I'll just say thank you to everybody for hopping on. As always, uh, next week, you are <laughs> going to have some, uh, we're going to have a slightly different schedule with some really awesome guest teachers, some of whom a lot of you know from the studio and um, from Fitness Crossroads and some other places where I've taught. So uh, I'm going to take a little fishing trip for a few days, but you'll have some good options, and um, I'll try to get a couple extra things up on the YouTube channel for you before I go as well. So you'll be well taken care of. Have a wonderful afternoon. I'll see you very soon. Good. Take care of each other. Take care of yourself. Oh, baby, you want to say bye? You want to say bye? Yep. Okay. Namaste.